Mary and Elmar had lived in the same house their entire lives, raising their children and living a life full of love. Elmar had served in the US military and Mary had a passion for photography and videography. After Elmar's sudden passing, Mary threw herself into her work finding comfort in capturing the beauty of the world around her. She lived a long life, but when she passed away at the age of 90 in 2004, her children discovered thousands of photographs and videos that their mother had taken throughout her life. As they went through the photographs, the children realized that their parents had lived a life full of secrets. They discovered pictures of places and people that they had never heard of, and it was as if their parents had been living a completely different life that they kept hidden from them. Although the children couldn't piece together everything about their parents' life, they came to the realization that their parents had lived a life full of adventure, love and creativity. The photographs were a reminder of the love their parents had shared and the beauty that their mother had captured through her lens. They realized that their parents' legacy was not in the secrets they kept, but in the life they lived and the love they had for each other. Welcome back everybody to the Bros of DK. I'm Leslie, today behind the camera is yet again Danny, thank you very much. He's a little bit sick still, cannot talk right now, but he's good to film, so bro, kudos to you, absolutely. We are filming in another incredible place. Yesterday night we hopped into the house to look at it and we were completely stunned by this place. Turn around the camera Danny, show them what we are working with today. A wonderful wooden abandoned house in Connecticut in the state of Connecticut in the United States. A wonderful place. At one point it used to be of Mary and her husband Elmer and they lived here all their lives. It's secluded, it's next to a busy road but there are no houses around it and this place is just incredible. I'm eager to take you inside. I got a short glimpse yesterday and literally the house is filled with thousands and thousands of pictures. Okay. She definitely also attended to some animals. Oh, whoa. Oh my gosh. Look at this, there are literally beehives inside of here, Danny. This looks like a bird feeder, right? To, yeah, to me, it looks like a bird feeder. You can see the stems, maybe with some food for the birds. But there are beehives inside of here. Pretty crazy. And this tree is literally wrapping around that bird feeder. Jeez. This is the house itself, their back porch, and that's the only window that's gonna lead us inside of this place. Okay. Ooh. Gonna try this out. You have to be a real monkey when you're exploring abandoned places. You can give, hand me the camera, bro. Oh, yep, get it through the window. Ooh. Okay, we're inside. Wow. This place is just even better during the daytime than it's at night. This feels such a cozy home. 
Mary, you made this place beautiful, I must say. And I literally feel at home. I was a little bit warm, so I'm just gonna take off my jacket, place it on the chair over here, and pretend that I'm visiting my grandmother today. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna do an epic exploration of this abandoned home of Mrs. Mary and Mr. Elmar. And the first thing that we see over here in the corner is unfortunately people have come into the house and search for valuables. They overthrow everything, they look through all our stuff just to see if there's something that they can sell or get value from. But trust me, this house is literally perfect. Except for that corner, the whole house is amazing. Starting off with this table, already you can see something. There are a lot of pictures left behind, but this is just the beginning. The whole house is filled. The most interesting one over here, I would say, is this picture. And that's a picture of this dining table, I believe. In this corner. Yeah, over here. You can see this was the door and the table was standing against this wall over here. Absolutely insane that these pictures are left behind. And this is one year before abandonment in the year 2003. 2003. The 5th of March. Oh, we figured something out yesterday. So the, this was a Caucasian family that lived here, but her uh, daughter, I believe, uh, was married to an African-American man and I had one child. And uh, there you can see she was part of the family. This was one of their granddaughters. Kaylee, it says on there. Kaylee. These are probably some other grandchildren from her. Absolutely amazing. And a couple more pictures over there as well. Also have a look over here on this side table. This is pretty interesting. I think the whole family of her is depicted over here. These are most likely her daughter or her son and their fiance, and then her granddaughter or grandson. This looks like a girl down here, definitely. This is her grandson and her granddaughter behind here. Wonderful. Oh, Danny. Even her pills are left behind. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Saturday are taken out, but she probably passed away somewhere in this week. And there are a couple of pills still left in this container over here. That's so saddening to see. Jeez. Mary or Elmer was also a big music lover. You can see there are a lot of records left behind everywhere over here. And also these Stereo 8 tapes above here. El Paso, Spanish Fireball. This is all Spanish music. Yeah, these are audio tapes. Music audio tapes. And what I especially love about this home is that you have this look through into the living room over there. We are standing here in this sort of patio area or this built out area, but you can look directly into the living room and it gives a very open feeling to the house. This lovely couch over here, the cushions still on it, and the flower pattern on it. Lovely to see. Oh, have a look on the wall. You see that on camera? Yeah. Yeah. There are literally imprints of artifacts and knickknacks that used to hang on the wall. And probably the people that came in here to steal everything took that also with him. This key looks like it used to be from a castle somehow. Okay. And over here, we got Mary, her other side table, her telephone, of course. When she was sitting in a sofa, she would call her friends and family and have talks. That's what I imagine an older lady would do with her time, just talk all day long. A big jar, probably for some water next to her. And then all these checks over here, these banknotes, Oh, they're all from Elmar, from her husband. They're for a very small amount, six euros, uh, two dollars, sorry, I'm calculating in euros, dollars, six dollars, two dollars, 19 dollars. In Europe, we don't use checks that much anymore. I don't think in Portugal either, right? No. In Belgium, we would use a check, for example, to buy a car or something like that, but not for a 19 dollar amount, like we see it over here. Oh, down below. We have also some magazines that she loved to read. 
good housekeeping, September 2004. That's the year she unfortunately passed away at the age of 90 years old. Mrs. Mary got to a lovely age. She lived a happy and long life. And you can see it all throughout her house. What's this box? It's also completely filled with checks, as you can see, for again, very small amounts. Wow. Let's close this up. Let's put this back. Okay. Oh, and then I had another sitting area for her over here. First of all, you can see her walking aid standing next to it, would probably be standing right next to the sofa like this. At an older age, she probably wasn't able to walk that, that good anymore. Probably had difficulty walking. And this is a lovely chair. Oh, oh it's also a rocking chair. <laughs> Look at this, it goes all ways. So she could go like this and get out of the chair or go like this and take a walking aid and walk throughout the house. Let's put this back like I found it. And she has yet another sitting area over to this side. And I must say, I absolutely adore this one as well. A lovely rocking chair sitting over there, rocking away. And then put on a tune over here on the record player. The records that we just found. What's the difference actually between the small records and the big records? Yeah. More music and less music. Is that just the only difference? Yeah. Okay. A bigger and smaller. I never knew. Effective listening. Lesson two continues. Look at this, Danny. Stereo A track player. That's definitely for these tapes that we just found. I quickly retrieved one. And I think you can. Yeah, you can fit it in like that. Then you could play a tape on this record player as well. That's lovely to see. Wow. Also some plants up there that have been withering away for the last 18 years. Oh, that's crazy. And even a fireplace on this side of the house. This must have been lovely when it was still running. She all had her glasses up here. Her magnifying sunglasses, as you can see. Pretty big glasses, I would say. Another set of them to them, to this side. And those were the clear ones. It's a lovely fireplace. And have you seen there's something strange about this as well? <laughs> there's a stone wall behind the fireplace. Stone walls or brick walls we never see normally in the United States. Normally it's just wood or plaster, but I'm so surprised that this is a stone wall inside of the house. We got this stand over here with the lamp. What sketches my attention is this sunbeam shaver we got over here. It's sort of an electric shaver that has been left behind from them. Fast back. Wow. What's this? Sort of a trophy. Maybe it was from the man because he had to do something with the United States military, but I haven't figured out what exactly it was. Uh, we see some pictures upstairs from him in his uniform, and that's how we relate to that. This might have been one of his rewards that he got throughout his life. What do we got over here? Oh, do we even want to know? One gallon. To la I'm not going to smell this one <laughs> like I normally do. Pine oil soap, it says on there. Oh, this is to clean the floors with. Let's pour it on the floors and clean away. Again, some pictures over here and a ripped up $1 bill. And this is the side of the house, as you can see, with some flowers. Oh, they also got some kitties. Wow. And this is the inside. Oh, take a few steps back, Danny. That's Lily, the house, this room. <laughs> How amazing is that? That's absolutely crazy. Just seeing it, how it was and how it is now. It actually looks pretty similar, but now just in an abandoned condition. Everything dirty, the plants fallen over and all of this left here. Lovely lamp up here as 
well. Okay, and then we enter into the kitchen area, the place where Mary filled the bellies of the household, filled the belly of Elmar, filled the belly of the grandchildren and the children. What a lovely kitchen, I must say. I love the cabinets, I love the design of it. It's just such a cozy place. Again, where are we gonna start? I'm just gonna look around. <laughs> what do we got over here? You have any clue what this is, Danny? Uh, to, for your nails. Is this for your nails? Like uh, a file? Yeah. Ah. Okay. It's got some notes over here, some booklets that you wrote things down in, probably for meals that you wanted to make. Here we can see a chocolate cake that you wanted to bake. And she wrote this all down, probably for going to the store. Those are names of the family. I, I thought it was chocolate cake itself over here, but there are family names, Sonny. Yeah, you see Beal, Beal, Beal. Of course, you're right. Beal, Beal, Ashley Beal, Kayla Beal. Oh, Kayla Beal was the African-American granddaughter. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to show a picture of her later. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just so blind and I look over things. We have another lovely picture of a grandchild over here. This might have been Kayla. Oh. Hmm. Wow. And then have a look around this lovely kitchen. Literally everything is still left in here. The glasses, even the dishes that you didn't wash at the end. The plants are literally throughout it because she put some plants up here. They started to fall down and crumble back into the sink even her spoons and all her kitchen utensils are still here and then of course not to forget the self-cleaning american oven kenmore i love these ovens the knobs and with the time in the middle here it's just so fascinating for me that looks so different from european ovens that i find in abandoned places all our spices oh all our spices over here are also still on the rack over there. Okay, I'm already very fascinated, sorry. <laughs> oh, I love this place. Another booklet over here. And this one does write down things that you needed to get in the grocery stores. Uh, bananas, corn, it says over here, cookies, milk. And she probably took this little booklet with her to the store when she went out to buy things. Betty will pick you up on Friday at 8.30 in the morning. Don't eat breakfast. We will have Christmas with Sesame and Dawn. Oh, Re reading this tells me that uh, maybe Mary at the end of her life might have some dementia because her, uh, her daughter probably wrote this down for her to read this in the morning and then she could revamp her memory again. Okay. This is also so wonderful. We have these little drawers. Inside with flour, sugar, coffee, everything would be put inside of here. And you would refill them. And they even had this little scale down here for the kitchen to weigh down everything. So a lot of keys in here from all around the house and probably other houses as well children and everywhere very interesting this one's completely filled with plates everything is still left in here oh. let's have a look at this one. Oh, we got something else we got this one is completely filled to this side also again with plates and everything for the kitchen but what we got down here it's like a little manual for the microwave that's down here. Press power, so you would uh, press power on the microwave, then press one, press power again, and then you could type in the wattage that you want for the microwave. So they made little manuals for her, probably because of her dementia at the end of her life. Super interesting. Of course, I'm gonna open it, Danny. <laughs> Hold your nose. There's nothing in there, luckily for you. Wow. 
And then one more thing in this room, you can see the calendar, April 2004. And that was the last date that Mary lived in this household. She wrote down a lot of things on this calendar. Okay, it's time now to go into the next room. Oh, or first, I'm going into the basement. Okay, let's go in there. The basement seems to be also like a real big mess. Oh my God. There's a little trash everywhere. I love the rope that they had here to the side to hold on to and make the little basement a little bit more fancy. Here we end up in the basement. Is there something to see to this side, Danny? Let me have a quick look. Uh, oh, these are jars that she probably would fill up with produce, with jams and stuff like that she would make over the years. And she, oh, there's also a clothing line is also in here. So in the winter time, she would hang up her clothes here in the basement. Okay. Ooh. Sort of a wooden wall. This also seems like it used to be a livable space at some point. You can see there's a couch down here and everything. There's a picture frame hanging on the wall. So there are some things that indicate that they used this space to live down here at some point. And this was a picture of Mary and Elmer. Here you can see Elmer in his military outfit and uh, Mary when they were still pretty young. I would suppose they were around 40 years old there. Lovely black and white picture of them. Maybe this was sort of a game room because you can see this wall over here with a lot of puzzles and a lot of books down there. I think they might come here or the children might use this as their playroom back in the time. If you hand me the camera, I'm gonna go a little bit further throughout the basement because it's a bit narrow here. I wanna see what more is over here. Okay, we can see here on the wall, we have the name of the man, of the man Elmer G. B. Bale. Bale, it says over here. And then they also had this hatch where you could go outside of the house with. Here's the electricity panel. It switched off right now. Not gonna switch it on. And all Elmer, his equipment, is also over here in the basement. Oh, I love this little fire tower that we have over here. They would probably put it out at Christmas to the front yard. There is another working room to this side, but nothing much of interest. Okay. That was the basement, not really that interesting, but still nice to show during the video, to show everything of the house. We've got another room in front of us here, and this is the bathroom of hers. Oh, I'm, I can take it over from you again if you want, because this is also very narrow. Wow. Even her little seat over there where she could sit while taking a bath. Her towels are still hanging here. And for some sort of weird reason, there is like literally carved in the wall, it has been broken up for some reason, like if they were s trying to search for something. Okay. We also got these fleur de lis on the wall, worked into the tiles, and all her cleaning products are still left here in the cabinet. You can see there's also a lot of medicine in here for her all the day. Even our toothbrushes down here are still left. Isn't that absolutely amazing? Look at all the knickknack and knickknacks and artifacts we have to this side. And even another walking aid over here in the bathroom. Whew. Okay. There you go, my friend. Let's close this beauty up. And now it's time for the real interesting part of the house. You're not gonna believe your eyes. First, we were gonna make our way over this pile of rubble. <sighs> and here, we end up in her main living space. And the first thing you see when you walk in here, what grabs your attention, is the table. Mary loved to shoot pictures and video. 
throughout her life. And she made thousands and thousands of pictures of literally every single event that happened with her family. And they're all left behind here in the house. Me and Danny found it so saddening to see that this whole place is completely filled with thousands of pictures and the family doesn't even seem to care. Like, I can get it sometimes that a couple of pictures are left behind, but this is just too much. Their whole life story is inside of this place. All left behind. You can see Mary even labeled every single picture in this place. It's pretty difficult to read, but I think it's talking about a family dinner with the aunt, Mary, and you can see all the names down here who was attending the party. She literally labeled every single thing. This was Mary, right? I think so, yeah. yeah. And here's another picture of her, together with a friend, yeah. probably. Like literally everything on here. From group photos of the family, to baby pictures over here. Wow. She had a lot of cameras. Yeah. Because this is Polaroid. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, wait. Which one? So this, this is Polaroid. Let me, show, let me show you. This is a Polaroid. Yeah. This is Kodak. Ah. You see? Yeah. Kodak. I definitely think also for her hobby, maybe also for her occupation, she had to do something with photo photography. What do we see over here? Polaroid again. Yeah. Oh, there's a baby crib. Wow. Maybe from when the granddaughter or grandson came over but have you shown this oh we haven't shown that already this is sort of a reporter setup uh, with a screen and everything so she definitely had to do something with filmmaking or with photography you can see complete film roll still left over here was this to make films with no i think i'm not sure but i think these are projectors ah okay okay i'm not sure but i think it is could be true. Looks like a projector though. And even a stand, a tripod for a camera is left here. That's a very sturdy one, I would say. Wow. <laughs> Check even down here, Danny. There are hundreds more pictures just scattered around and lying over here. Oh, this is one in the snow. Because in this area of the United States, it gets very, very cold. And then we have the complete polar opposite. They are at a holiday inn resort or or a, a holiday resort somewhere in the world. And here's Elmar standing in front of a great lake somewhere in a national park. Wow. Oh, all the glass is still in here, neatly stacked. Look at that. Is that Mary? No, that's no, not. That's, that's, her, that's, her, that's, her, that's her daughter, of course. That's her daughter. Wow. And she's having a child. Caroline Mary, wow, that's when she was born, eight hours old. Mom, barely. So Caroline Mary, barely. She literally documented her life step by step. Every single step indeed is documented. This is so saddening to see. And here, you can even see some film rolls wow. still left. Bro, I'm getting shivers of seeing this. This shouldn't be here. This We shouldn't be able to go through this. Absolutely not. But it's here and it has to be shown. But why don't the children come here and just take these questions? They get me every single time. Look at this man, nicely dressed up. Don't know who he is. But this, this is her husband. This was Elmar. And the man that we just showed you didn't actually look like it. So this was Mary. Elmar. I don't think she's there. No, huh? I, no, 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 I don't think she's there. Oh, oh no, she had other types of hair. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. This was definitely Elmar. This was Elmar. There's no, nothing on the back here. And of some poor, some pictures of Caroline as well. African-American daughter. <laughs> Excuse me. Sometimes I <laughs> do dumb things. Okay, let's put it back nicely. <sighs> Sorry, I need a moment. Wow, that's, that's incredible to, to find. There's also a diploma of graduation here. And it's directed to Mary Bill. Let's see. Graduation exercise of class 1963. 
this was her diploma that she got from the school. Wow. Is this over here? Oh, and this is her scorecard. <laughs> Subject, English, philosophy, history, US history, and these are all her grades that she got on there. That's absolutely amazing. Wow. And here we got that look through a window to, to the other side, to the patio. Yeah. Okay. Got even more pictures over here. A lovely little girl. These were probably all the grandsons and grandchildren. Elmer George Bale. There's also a lovely clock hanging here on the wall. Yeah. And then up here, Danny, have you seen all these plates that are hanging here? This one they got from the Grand Granian fireplace. Oh, the Queen Mary. Wow. It's amazing. And then we have this grand overview of the living space down below there. Such a, war a warm and lovely place. But we've got one more thing to this side as well. Got a little stand over here with again, tons and tons of pictures on top of there. This is when they were already very old. Mary was at an old age. Probably her granddaughter or her daughter or her son got another child. Here we can see Elmar again as well, holding one of his grandchildren. This is again completely filled with pictures. What's this down here? Vacation postcard. Mrs. Elmer Bill, Mr. Elmer Bill. With this lovely stamp on there, USA, 13 cents, it says on it. Oh. Marriage picture as well. Jeez. Yet again. Hundreds and hundreds of pictures down below here from all the memories made throughout my up throughout life. Absolutely crazy. This is just a vision of what the house has become. It's a broken memory, something that has been forgotten about, just like this picture. And the roller blades, the roller skate would skate through children probably would use this back in the time and then it's time to look through this lovely living room what a beautiful place have a look at this here the family would sit on the couch enjoy themselves Mary would also be here this was her jacket last word she probably laid it down here I forgot about it also again very religious people, the Last Supper, and we have our beloved Jesus in the middle of it. Was this a marriage picture of them, you think? No, it's color. Oh, it's again color. Sorry, I'm colorblind. I don't see that now. I'm just kidding, but yes, it's, it's definitely not their wedding picture. But maybe from their children as well. Wow. I don't even know where to look because there are so, so many pictures throughout this place. Okay. What's down below there? Is that interesting? Just boxes of pictures. Oh. Man, mind blown, absolutely. Have you ever explored a house with so many pictures left behind? No. Me neither. In my 10 years of exploring, I've never seen this before. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, this is the body of a doll. And I think, the dress that, he's, that she is wearing, oh, sorry, shouldn't have shown that. <laughs> Mary probably made herself in her spare time. Wow. What a, what do we have over here? What's that? There's a cushion glued to a food tray? Yeah. What, what was it used for? American convenience. Sit down and put that on your lap. 
no, upside down. I've never used one of these. Is this really to eat from? Yeah. <laughs> so you sit like this in front of the television. Uh, ah, yeah. I get it. Then it doesn't rock as much as when you just have it on your American convenience. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> we have to say like uh, whenever something is very, very convenient, like the drive throughs or the ATM drive throughs that we saw before, then we say American convenience. And this is again American convenience. These plants, they are 18 years old. They are real plants, Danny. Oh, and they're still left here. Jeez. The lamp and everything. And even a suitcase back here. Travel the world with. I think these people also had some money because we see pictures from all over the world and back in that time period, it was very expensive for them to travel around the world. And of course, also the globe over here and everything just gives it away that these people had a love for traveling. See, yet again, one of those devices and you could somehow manipulate something with it. You put one of these yeah. here and one put another in you. And then you can watch it or something like that? Yeah. Ah, okay. I find these so interesting because there's a, like a little television in the middle. <laughs> Some pills above here. Take with food, it says on there, and they wear for Mary. Take one capsule a day before bedtime, it says on them. We got a television down here. Again, one of those old school, lovely televisions. Sylvania, Sylvania television, encased in this wooden carved frame. It's absolutely lovely. Oh, and I forgot to talk about the chair that's next to it. A completely grass green chair, as you can see, and it also rocks like the other one. So a doll on there with a hand knitted dress. And then we got still this side, a lovely side, where she and Elmer, back in the time, used to sit together, enjoy their evening, watch television. Probably at the end of their life, she would be sitting here alone. Her walking aid is also still left here. Her glasses. What do we have on here? There are literally phone numbers on top of the horn of the telephone. And they're probably from important people that you could call when an emergency happened. Probably Leon is over here in red. Yeah. That was for the emergencies. Yeah, and Charles is this side. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so amazing. They, she probably, like I said before, she probably had dementia and that's how they helped her remember things. <laughs> I love this cap that we have up here. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Probably again, hand knitted cushions and they are because we can see the thread is over here the knitting supplies again more suitcases and for some weird reason there's also a bowling ball inside of the house but bowling is a very big sport in the united states benny before we leave the united states we have to go bowling at least one time have you done it before yeah okay it's a big thing in portugal Really? Yeah. It's not so big in Belgium. There's always a bowling alley somewhere. <laughs> okay, we gotta go bowling in the United States. But first it's time to go upstairs and see what's left over there. Okay. time to show you the upper floors the place where Mary and Elmer used to sleep and where their children also used to live the most private parts of their household first this one Danny sure yeah oh we haven't seen much decay yet in the house but here you can clearly see after 18 years the building is starting to deteriorate but I'm pretty surprised by how the building is holding up because we didn't saw big holes or something like that that we saw in other abandoned places that have only been abandoned for maybe a decade or so. I think we have come into one of the children, children's bedrooms. Okay, there's only one child bedroom and one big bedroom. And this was definitely a child's bedroom. As you can see, there's a doll left behind over here. The bed is still made. 
and everything is still in pristine condition. That picture frame behind there literally reminds me of Switzerland. But I think it's somewhere in the United States because the church looks very American. Huh. You can see some molding on the wall. So yeah, the, the place has to be saved very soon if it wants to survive. Otherwise, it's not usable anymore. A lovely vanity over here. The first thing we see is this picture again that we also saw in the basement. They've got a couple of them throughout the house. And here we can see again Elmar with the uniform on when he was still in service for the United States military. All these buttons on top of here. I don't know where they came from, but it's pretty interesting to see. Wow. Was this something to store jewelry inside? Yeah, looks like it. Hmm. It's lovely. Ah, oh, lovely vanity. Even still got a piece of clothing lying here. And this is definitely from a child. Maybe from the grandchild or something. From a girl as well. Lovely upholstery poof in front of here. Oh, and all our clothing is also still in these building cabinets. These walk, how would you call it? A walk-in drawer or something? A walk-in dresser? Closet? Yeah, something like that. Okay. And then we got a couple more things to this side of the room that are pretty interesting. First and foremost, this certifies that Elmar J. Beale completed the course of study prescribed for junior high department in 1900. 28. This is a diploma from the man of the household. Isn't that just fantastic? This is already one, no, 94 years old and still standing inside of this house. These are true memories of the people that once lived in these places. <sighs> Absolutely insane. Back here, got a very large picture frame with a group photo of probably men in the military that we have over here. And there's somewhere campsite in Hidden Valley and Mummy, Mummy Race, R Mummy Range it says over there? Yeah, Mummy Range. Probably a military training site back in that time when Elmer was in the military. And this is a color picture of a rafting adventure that I had somewhere in the United States. Even one more plushie left behind from the child. Absolutely beautiful. Nothing in the drawers, but over here we got some suitcases they're probably used to travel around the world with. There's also still a tag on it. And this one says Mary. This one is Mary's. Okay. Still, still have some stuff in there. <laughs> oh, this is probably where she went to, to the Eagle Museum. <laughs> During one of her last travels. And we got another suitcase down here. Let's see what we have on here. There's also a complete name on it. Yeah, and this is Elmar. This is Elmar, his suitcase. Wow. And this one looks really old and looks really rough as well. It has been bound up. Okay, let's place this back nicely in the corner here where it belongs forever. Okay, let's go further to the next room. Oh, Danny, before I go out, let me show you this. Look at these light switches. <laughs> I love them. They're cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta give me credit for it. <laughs> Let's go to the next room. And this is the master bedroom. I believe also this was the last room where Mary slept in. You can see even her night suit is still left here on the bed. She probably placed it here at the last day she was alive. Forever. It has been lying here for the last 18 years. It's so saddening. And I'm also pretty surprised by how this vanity in this room is holding up. There are some artifacts on top of it that are barely falling off. And I think somebody placed some books down there to keep it up. <laughs> Might this have been an old picture of her? A black and white picture? M? Does this, is this an M? I don't know. No, me neither. It's interesting to see. Oh, this is the same vanity as the other room, or the same yeah. shape, shape of mirror. Wow. Another suitcase down here 
Still some clothing in there. Now we got this lovely chair to this side as well. Oh, and Danny, I'm just gonna let you go over there, but I can see in the corner of the room, she probably put one of her grandchildren there when she woke up in the morning. She could have a look at her, a look at him or her. That's so lovely. A religious woman and heart and soul. Religious depictions everywhere throughout the house. Wow. Now we come to the last corner of this room. This enormous chest, beautifully encarved. Got this suitcase above here. Oh, this also still opens up. We first place this to the side because her head is also on here. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. What's in here? It's also completely filled with things from travel around the world with magazines, Golden Eagle, Golden Age passports, stuff like that, newspapers, and everything is still in our suitcase. And then we got this mannequin that's holding up her hat that she used to wear. It's a pretty special hat, I would say. Yeah. Is this for funerals? Yeah, yeah, Danny is nodding his head. I thought the same, like you would put this in front of your eyes, right? Yeah. And then uh, it's like in a roaring position. Some more things over here. Lovely picture, again a group picture. I think Mary might be in here. The Baptist Youth Conference in 1966. It says on the picture. Oh, and here they are at a dinner party inside of the house. And you just told me something about this film as well. It's also a pretty interesting film, right? Yeah. Uh, what's it called again? Uh, that's a 126 millimeter film. Okay. It's from a pocket camera. Pocket camera. I know nothing about this type of photography, so I'm glad to have Danny with me here. <laughs> Another oil lamp oh, has been converted into an electrical lamp. And down here, we can see the books that she loved to read before she went to bed. The case up to the sleepwalker's knees. Lovely. Oh, there's even a puzzle piece attached to the back of it. <laughs> it's stuck to there. Okay. And that's a very interesting suitcase, wouldn't you say? Yeah. That's maybe the last thing I want to show in this place. Let's, let's open it up. Let's see what this one has to behold. Wow, I've never seen a suitcase like this before. Can I open it up? Yeah, I can open it up. Let's see, I have to also do the other side. Oh. I see already you would hang it up like this and then you could open it up you could zip it up open like this and then your dresses or something like that or your uniform would be hanging inside of here it's like it acts like a cabinet inside of an abandoned uh, inside of a hotel or something like that okay I can place it here in the corner oh it's very heavy excuse me <laughs> Wow, interesting. Never seen something like that before. What a fantastic place to explore. Mary, Elmer, the grandchildren, the children. I want to thank them all very much for their lives, for everything. And it was so saddening to go through here and to see that everything has been left behind. Thousands and thousands of pictures, but it made for a very interesting story and for a very interesting investigation. I want to thank you all for watching this week's video. First of all, no. First of all, thank you, Danny, for filming for with me. His link is in the description. He has forgotten. He also makes vlogs about our adventures in the United States. Second of all, I want to thank you all for watching this week's video. What an epic exploration. Absolutely adored it. If you liked it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and give me a nice comment in the comment section. There's also a link in the description for Patreon. There you can support the channel and help us out going around the world filming these amazing places. 
I want to thank you all. <laughs> Again, I said it too many times, but I love you so much. Until the next adventure, bye-bye.